Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome back to another 90 Day Fiance Chat. Happily ever after. This show is a reality show based on couples. One person from the U.S., one from another culture, another country. How they combine their lives, they fall in love. Love and relationship issues on top of that. Cultural issues of language barriers and learning each other as well as learning the process of legally becoming a citizen all of those things are 90 day fiance as these couples try to head toward the altar all right guys this is happily ever after which is one of the spin-offs of 90 day fiance which follows couples that are already established that have probably already been on the franchise and seeing if they if their journey is happily ever after with the question mark all right, I'm going to start off with Michael and Angela. Last time, Angela started to discover things about Michael through his phone, that he may have some type of a, a group geared towards uh, tricking American women into uh, marriage so that they can become citizens. Um, these men are from African countries, Nigeria. I know if you guys have heard of the Nigerian Prince emails that they, they used to do maybe like a decade or so ago. Um, so she's thinking he has his own group kind of based around that, uh, based off of the information she got through his phone. Um, they kind of got into a blowout argument. She took his phone, um, she went through it and just, there's a lot of things in there she didn't understand, things that looked like it was related to money using women she's not a hundred percent on it but it does the, the information does look pretty damning so now she's talking to a lawyer trying to see get some advice you know if this is going on with michael what is her next steps and the lawyer says you know um whatever you decide you only have so much time before you know because he had the interview they said it's going to be about two weeks before they make some type of decision or whatnot after this interview um but if he does become a citizen within this short period of time that she has left you know after she's not just now finding out this information that she's going to be responsible to take care of him for 125 percent of his household income something like that so she has to provide 125 percent of what his normal income would be um if he becomes a citizen they've been married for two years already um, but if this process goes through that's what she's going to be responsible for and she's going to be responsible for him for up to 10 years even if they do get a divorce so that's how it works when it comes to visas and citizenship and marriage and all of that in the U.S. So that's kind of shocking. And then also she does have a chance to try to withdraw her petition for him to become a citizen. But she'd have to email the embassy as soon as she could after she makes her decision because it's only like a small two week window. So she's trying to get investigating and figure out, you know, what's going on. And the two of them finally have a meeting. They meet up and I think she confronts him. Um, and we see part of that. I think we see part of that confrontation during this episode. And there's going to be more to the conf confrontation in the following episode. But yeah, that was pretty crazy. And, and one thing I like about this show is that you learn different things about citizenship and the different laws and people from other countries the legalities and some of it's kind of crazy like we know that partially we know about divorce in america but divorce here the obligations when the person's from another country you're kind of just taking care of them you are responsible for them while they're in this country because it's like they don't know anything they don't have anything Divorce proceedings can take a while, and of course, you know you have alimony, you have child support, depending on your scenario, but you don't have to have any of those things, um, and you don't even have to be married that long to be responsible for this person for up to 10 years, which is a long commitment if things don't work out early on. Uh, so I hope the truth comes out with Michael if he does have some type of um, conglomerate going on 
which uh, with Nigerian men fooling American women, many of them older is what Angela saw. And she's also the older woman in his life. You know, I hope that the truth really does come out if that's the case. Um, and Angela, she's nobody to play with. So with the law on her side, hopefully she's able to figure out the truth. Gino and Jasmine, they they try to make up. That's this is our next couple. Gino and Jasmine. It's kind of been recently revealed that Gino has a porn issue, and that's why he is not intimate with Jasmine on a regular base, basis, and she feels unattractive, even though she's got all this work done on her body to feel more attractive to him and just more attractive on her own because she does have body issues, but because of his porn issues. And then she kind of calls him out on finances and the way he treats her as far as not being um, being fiscally helpful to her and, you know, just running the household and running their lives as a man that just has the money together. She kind of called him out and that hurt his manhood a bit. Uh, so they kind of went back and forth. He kind of called her, I think he called her the B word because of her attitude and how she kind of calls him out on certain things and he doesn't like that. But they decided to make up and work on their issues. So they're going to work on her doing this pageant, which is something for her self-esteem, something that he'll build her up after she's going through so much concerning not being able to get her kids there to, to America in a timely manner. And then her mother's going through health issues and she doesn't really have a purpose there in America. So this will be her purpose. The genus Gino starts to step up and say, you know, I'm going to be your manager. You're going to be in the pageant industry. They look for dresses and they just have a good time looking for dresses. And then Gino reveals this guy wears a hat like 24 seven because he has issues with his head. I don't know. He wears a hat 24 uh, seven. Jasmine points out he's not very fashion forward, but he was really good at helping her when it came to picking out dresses. And he even admits that he used to be into the Michigan men of Michigan pageant or something like that. And they showed old pictures of him where he was trying to be a part of that. And he studied the industry of pageants. So that was some new information about Jasmine and Gino. I'm glad that they're not yelling at each other right now and things have kind of calmed down and settled. Uh, so we're going to see what happens and see if, you know, Gino's going to be her manager. She's kind of up for it. Like, yeah, you can be my manager. I mean, she has a bold, outgoing personality. There's a lot of things she can do. She's on this reality show. Um, she can make public appearances. I mean, there's multiple things she can do even outside the pageant industry right now. Just because of her personality, her boldness. Know she's got these surgeries done some people may say she's beautiful and attractive so it's a lot of things not, and I'm not trying to put her down but you know uh, people all have their different preference of what beauty is and I'm I'm not saying she's not beautiful but she has had some work done which I'm a little indifferent on but I kind of say to each his own but uh, I don't think it's something that I would engage or participate in but everybody has their thing. And I kind of pray for them because it is risky to do some of these surgeries, elective surgeries that aren't health related. But we don't want to get too deep into that part. Just glad that Jasmine and Gino are really doing good right now. Somebody's doing good on this franchise um, at this point. Alexi and Lauren. Alexi's really stressed because he still has family in Israel and the Israel Hamas crisis is continuing and it's been very stressful for him. I'm sure he's looking in on his family, seeing how he could help while still taking care of his own family here in the U.S. Lauren, you just recently got a mommy makeover and had a whole lot of different things done to her body all at once. And the healing process is taking a lot longer than he expected. And there's a lot that she can't do. So Alexi takes the kids, I think, over to her parents' house. They kind of have an argument because he's saying, you know, this healing process is taking a lot longer. It's been so many weeks. And he's really stressed out about trying to do everything. And her doctor recently said, you know, since she's having swelling, she needs to dial down what she started to do again. So they kind of had issues in the argument 
when it comes to that he went to go sleep on the couch i'm i feel like they're having like regular marriage issues versus most couples on 90 day which can be kind of crazy stuff they're having regular marriage issues but with the mommy makeover attached to that because everybody doesn't get the mommy makeovers but i guess it's becoming a thing now but hers was so extensive that Alexi just feels like it's a lot put on him. So I'm hoping the best for Alexi. I know that Lauren, I feel like they're going to stay together. They just seem like those people that they're going to stay together. They're going to do the best they can to work it out. But there's tension between them. So uh, I do hope the best for them. And I hope her healing process um, moves along smoother and smoothly as they continue Another thought I was having is at the time she was folding laundry and all that, she was kind of having pain doing that at the same time. Um, but he's like, you know, some of these things you can maybe do once a week, like the laundry and stuff. I mean, it's not, she said these repetitive things I can't keep doing. It was like, well, once a week shouldn't be an issue for you to do that. Um, I'm thinking like, they probably should have budgeted the fact that, hey, we're going to need some help. You never know how these different surgeries are going to come out. And if, if her insurance covers or his insurance covered it or whatever, great. That part is great. But like you have to actually also budget other financial needs you're going to need. They're a young family, three really young kids, children, babies are almost. One is a baby, I think. So... I don't know if she picked the best time to do this makeover. It probably kind of is the best time if she's planning to stop having children. But she should have budgeted, hey, let's hire someone, you know, and I can oversee what they do. I can tell them to do this, this, and that and help around the house. They should have budgeted that into this whole process so that all the strain wouldn't be on him. Like hiring somebody to me I think would really be a big problem solver because mom does help the mom and her mom and dad help and I think Alexi's dad is there as well and they can help and they have helped there's a little contention between Lauren and her mom because she feels somewhat similar to Alexi that it's a procedure that really didn't have to be done and especially as extensive as it was so, I, I mean, being her mom, I probably would try to be there for her as much as possible. But for some reason, I'm, Lauren's mom is not up for that. But she is helping with the kids a lot. But it's in the fact of, like, she could actually be there in the home, staying overnight with them. I mean, it would displace her for weeks at a time. But I believe her mom and dad are retired no excuse I'm not not trying to cut into their life just because they're retired but you know even pay moms i mean you could offer mom some money and see if that will work out versus just not having a backup plan as far as having that consistent help um if not that because you can't always rely on family for that and i understand family has their own life as well and sometimes people don't get along with their family hire somebody that you can oversee she's in she's excuse me guys okay guys sorry about that that was my alarm that was going off but yeah i mean they could hire someone and she's at a place where she's in her right mind you know the surgery has not impaired her in that way so she could say you know um i'm gonna hire this person and i'm gonna oversee them doing this this and that cooking the meals um cleaning the house I mean, all of that could be done and that could really take a lot of strain off of their marriage right now. Just a thought. All right, now we're going to go to Patrick, Thais, and John and the whole dad fight. Last time the dads were fighting, Patrick and Thais' dad, they just don't see eye to eye. Even John feels like Patrick's dad is like taking advantage of him, asking him to pay for certain things that he should just freely give his son. Um, Patrick has an apartment there in Brazil, though they live in the U.S. He continues to pay for this apartment that they really don't need. Um, so Thais has an issue with that. They're there for their daughter, Elise's birthday party. I think she's going to be one years old. And dad basically wants them to pay for this 
to fix up the venue, which is his own home, basically. It's his own property, so to speak. I think it's like a, a ranch or something. So that's kind of become a contention between um, his brother, John, who's there with them, and um, Thais's dad, and kind of questioning him. And then he also, Thais's dad is like, well, also, your son never asked for the blessing of my daughter. And uh, so, and you guys got married and all this stuff and never asked for my blessing. But John kind of calls it out and says, honestly, the truth is he didn't get a chance to ask for your blessing because your daughter lied about the situation and scenario, which was true. She kind of kept everything under wraps. She was scared to even tell her dad about this. So, excuse me. So she takes, I do think she takes some fault in the situation and matter. And, you know, as a woman, I think that she could come between them and say, hey, dad, this is the scenario. And this is why um, he didn't do what he did. And she kind of could stand up for her man at this point. But she it seems like she's kind of silently in the background as if, Um, Patrick kind of pushed her into this marriage but she was kind of all for the marriage herself and didn't really want to tell her dad and he found out later on that that dad didn't know about it but he still wants he still wants the blessing even though they're they're married now they've had the baby his little grandchild so I part of me was thinking well it's kind of petty they're already married He wants the blessing still. Um, Again, like I said, Thais could step up and say, um, she can even, if she doesn't step up and say that in front of her dad, she could at least go to Patrick and say, honey, could you do this for me? Could you um, grant this for my dad? Because she kind of is saying, you know, can you do what my dad asked? But she's not, I mean, she could kind of finesse it, sweet talk it as the wife, you know, and, you know, I know, honey, that, you know, it's not your fault. It was me. I kept everything secret. If you could just do this for my dad, he really wants this. And just ask for, ask for my hand, even though we're already married. You know, ask for his blessing anyway. She could do that. Or Patrick can step up and say, you know, he said he just wants to prove that he's being a good husband to her and that he is. And he's just going to show him by actions but all this all this guy wants is him to say you know uh your daughter is special and precious to me do i have your blessing on our marriage even though our marriage is is already taking place you know your daughter means that much to me that you know i'm still going to ask your blessing because i want to be in a good space with you and I really care about your daughter and I think she's precious and special just like he I know the dad's like my daughter's precious and special and you could still ask for this blessing so Patrick could step up that way as well I mean to me it's prideful it's kind of petty on it's kind of petty on the dad's side but it's kind of petty on his side I mean he could definitely just do it I mean I don't think that it's that difficult and it's not like it's impeding on his manhood. You're already married to her. You think she's amazing enough to marry. Why not take that step to just say, okay, dad, I do think your daughter is amazing. And I do want your blessing on this marriage. Like, I don't see why pride can get in the way of that. And it's very, it's a very small issue. Then we go later on. Well, but with the dad fight, the dad fight continues and um, Patrick and Thais are concerned that once they have the birthday party, that it's just going to be more fighting. That's kind of how things end up with that first meeting of the dads. Um, Then they hang out later with Thais's friends. She's her friends are kind of a little bit suspect of Patrick as well, because they were expecting a short trip to the U.S. to meet up with Patrick, but she ended up staying for two years, getting married, having a baby. So they're like putting everything on Patrick as if he's the person that coerced her and forced her into this lifestyle, when clearly it's something that she wanted to do or she would not have done so. 
but she was keeping this whole thing secret from family, friends, even her dad. So one of her friends really goes after Patrick saying, you know, you kiss somebody while you guys were going together. And he's like, well, no, we were just, we had just met when I kissed this other person. There was no official relationship. But she just keeps going after Patrick. And then his, um, his brother John is also there. And John and Thais don't get along very well. John is kind of a busybody. But they go back to when John, you know, had a party and brought a bunch of girls over the first night that she was there um Thais was there to meet Patrick that he brought a whole bunch of women there and had a party and it was just kind of um uncomfortable for her at that situation scenario um so they're gonna the friends are gonna kind of fight it out with Patrick and really John is really gonna get into it um one of the friends it's just the one friend it's two two young ladies there that are her friends but this this one girl that's kind of annoying <laughs> and she goes after not only Patrick but the brother John saying he's a bad guy a bad influence on Patrick and to me I think she's pushing a little bit too much I mean she's just totally instigating it to the point where I don't think it should be that big of a deal and I don't think that she should have her two cents in it so deeply I mean, look at Tai. She didn't even, you know, fully inform her of what was going on. So why does she feel like she can just come in and say what she's going to have to say because she's such a pivotal part of her life? Maybe not that much, young lady. Uh, well, it's just a little bit weird and a little bit of a put off for, this, for her to kind of come after them in the way that she did. It was a little funny and a little weird. But John's going to kind of really, you know, give her a run for her money and she's giving them a run for their money. So it's some more is going to ensue with this little friend meetup later on in another episode. All right, let's get into Emily and Kobe and the bride pet price in Cameroon. Even though Emily and Kobe have been married in the U.S., they have two kids now. When he goes back to his country in Cameroon, they have to do their marriage vows all over again. They have different rituals of how the people in Cameroon have to kind of, the parent has to give the wife away to the family. They have to pay for her. It's called a dowry. So they request different items. And, you know, the family just kind of went through the motions of the process because that's the customs there. But Emily's mom especially was not happy about a price being paid for her daughter. So the different items they had was like a goat. Um, then they had so much money. It's like 750 francs. I think I said it right, but I may not have the right denominations. If anyone's from Cameroon can help me out, email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com. Let me know what your money denominations are called. But they said it's about a dollar fifty in the U.S. money, and he said in his country that's actually a lot of money for them, and that's all they could afford. So he, the dad, you know, likes Kobe, and he's trying to respect their um, customs. Mom still is a little bit doesn't like the feeling of so-called feels like selling her daughter. So he agrees with whatever they can afford because, you know, the leaves, the leaves that they were going to give represents the money. They don't use actual money, but the leaves represent the money. And then actually, I guess they'll get the money later. And the dad's like, I don't know how much I should ask for. And if it was, if it was me, I would, I would give all the leaves. I was like, you know, I want this whole amount just so my daughter would feel good that, Hey, I bet it all on you, daughter, and I think you're worth as much as possible in this scenario. But I think he was trying to also be on the be on the family side and be supportive, um, so that they can afford this dowry, so their marriage can be official in Cameroon. Um, so that happened. They the bride price is done. Emily could not be there during this um, transaction. And I wonder if she, what she's going to think about her being worth $1.50 in American money. I kind of don't think she doesn't care at this point because she's invested in this relationship, this marriage. But yeah, it's kind of funny. It's kind of weird to say, hey, I'm worth $1.50. So um, I'm glad this process is finally coming to a close, it looks like. And next time we're going to see the wedding 
And I think Emily makes a pretty good looking Cameroonian bride. I, I love the clothing and the garb that they have. Um, but they didn't get into that episode yet, so we'll talk about that next time. They did um, just show some previews. All right. Um, and also, the whole issue with Kobe's ex and the fact that he was still in a relationship with her while they were together. That whole thing has been taken care of, but she's not really happy about that scenario being true. But she's moved on from it. They're going to continue to work on this and, you know, really just do the marriage ritual, ritually for the Cameroonian family. But I don't see them having like a big issue due to the whole ex situation and scenario. So they're moving forward. They seem to be okay. Uh, when it comes to Ed and Liz and... Um, Ed, Liz, and the mom. Mom comes with Liz so she can get the rest of her stuff. Ed and Liz are broken up. She's getting all the rest of her stuff out of the house. They have like a horrible little fight and issue. And it's just, um, they're not having a good time. And she wanted to, she wanted to have positive closure and say goodbye. But he, you know, says, while she's trying to say goodbye, he's saying, you know, I want you to learn from this for the next guy you're with. And he's just kind of putting her down. So she has to kind of like put him down in return. And she's upset. She's like, you know, I wanted to leave on a positive note, but he's just kind of a jerk. So they leave. She gets in the car. She's crying. And then they finally pull off. It was a bad goodbye. It was a, it was kind of a messed up scenario. Uh, a, a really bad breakup situation. I'm like... You know, when you break up, you want to do it in a certain way. If you can do it amicably and you can have positive closure, I mean, that's going to be good for you. Even the whole situation may be messed up. At least you were able to say goodbye in the way that you wanted to. Keep it positive. But Ed's behavior didn't allow her to do that. And no surprise. Not a big fan of Ed. Continue to not be a good, uh, big fan of him. Finally, Rob, Sophie, and Claire last time they met up rob was and sophie were are trying to make men's on their relationship and reconnect they just have so many different issues they're fighting over little things to me they're acting like a little boyfriend girlfriend couple and not a husband and wife they easily break up get back together break up get back together he doesn't know how to have a wife to me or really talk to a wife or a young woman in that way to try to appease her, like to be able to have enough humility to say, okay, I'm the older person in the scenario. I'm the man, you know, I'm going to try to talk to her in a way to, you know, make her feel better about the scenario. Not that he has to bow to her, but it's just a way you have finesse things and you kind of talk to your bride or your person. You don't treat them like you treat somebody on the street. And it's kind of like what they do to each other. So she's going back to the house to get her stuff you know he's up, kind of upset about it but he apologizes to Claire the mom because last time they got into it she cried and she's suggesting they take some time off Claire is kind of getting in the middle of them so Rob is upset that she's getting in the middle and suggesting in, in doing all these things but he tries to apologize he tries to be the bigger man in the scenario um, he gives her a cute little toy that she's been wanting, a little plushie that she likes. So that kind of softens her heart a little bit. And he apologizes to her mom. That softens her heart a little bit. But she still says, you know, I need, we need a little more time. I'm going to go get my stuff and stay with my friend again. He's kind of tired of that back and forth of her always leaving the situation instead of them kind of working it out together. So that's where they're at. She's in the middle of getting her stuff to so she can go and stay with her friend he's kind of like not sure if he's gonna try to get her to stay Claire, the mom is in the way so we'll see what's gonna happen next time um as she departs again and leaves her home again um because of their issues but yeah that's it for 90 day fiance happily ever after i think i've covered all the couples and all their life scenarios and situations. If you guys have any thoughts, comments, you want to chat back with me, email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com. 
or you can comment below on whatever platform you are checking this out on really appreciate you listening and i just want to thank you guys for being a part of these episodes with me these recap chats we're all about faith love and trends right here on cbiz media what do you think we should do on our social medias on our podcast how can we be better uh, give me some advice give me your thoughts all of that email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com have a great one guys we're coming back again with more faith love and trends all the best god bless